there's a lot of thoughts happening today. Uh, so thank you for showing up to mine. Uh, uh, I, uh, it's, not, it's not very serious. It's, it's, uh, I hope that uh, at the end of it, you are like uh, remotely entertained and uh, maybe uh, learn a little bit of useful things. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, well, click on the word. Wow, uh, cool. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, my name is Hui Jing and uh, I, uh, I have a day job. Uh, I work at Shopify. Yes, uh, Shopify uh, pays me my salary so I can uh, pay my income tax and my CPF. Um, so the, the thing about Shopify uh, is that we, uh, just to clarify, if you have never heard of our company before, uh, it's not, our logo is an all green shopping bag. The orange shopping bag is Shopee. The red shopping bag is Shopee. And we are a green shopping bag. And we do not do music. Uh, that one is Spotify. Uh, ours is e-commerce green shopping bag based in Canada. Okay, just to clarify. And uh, so, as a Canadian company, it started off English only, uh, very normal because, you know, North American market, we focus there first. But eventually, like 15 years, 16 years later, then they're like, oh, actually, this world got a lot of people who don't speak English. If you look at the numbers, right, I'm speaking English right now, so this is like, hey, but actually, not really your, na your native language. Like, how many of you really native English speakers? Not that many, right? But we are forced to learn English. Never mind, this is, a, this is because of colonialism. Ha! Huh? Uh, but in, in theory, right, 5% of the world are actually really English native English speakers, the rest of them have to learn it, and then we all got our own mother tongues. So it's like, oh yeah, okay, we, we should probably like, you know, uh, in order to bring into new markets, we should like do uh, internationalization. Um, the thing about my company is, uh, is uh, as, uh, as, as all tech companies go, uh, we like to change, uh, change a lot, change, 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 until like I've been there for three years, I already changed seven teams. Uh, so it's not a bad thing, it's not a bad thing, keeps things exciting, keeps things fresh, yeah. Uh, but this is a bit of history and story time. So uh, the TLDR, what I'm trying to say here is that uh, I also try to trace the history la, of how our we did internationalization and Shopify. Uh, some of my conclusions are, are off the mark because I'm only with the company for three years, but Shopify around for 16 years. So uh, the, the key here is I want to tell everybody is that, remember, we don't actually know how dinosaurs look like. So uh, these conclusions are merely inferences, okay? So I'm trying, to not, try not to get myself into any trouble and saying anything about Shopify under my salary. Um, so uh, this is public information. I went into the amazing website that's called the Wayback Machine. Uh, what does the Wayback Machine do? Wayback Machine allows you to look for things that happened in the past, even though the page not there anymore. So uh, you must tell your young, young, young kids or like younger friends. Like, if you post something on the internet, it may or may not be forever. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, this is back in. In 2014, on uh, September 10 or 2014, right? Uh, Shopify.com website was English only. But then, uh, on September 11, 2014, wow, they introduced a language country selector to the footer. Uh, I wasn't there, so I don't know what happened. But like, like eh, suddenly we support a lot of different regions. This is cool. Let's look into it a bit more. So then, I realized that we have a bunch of localized English sites. You know, we have a French site, which all makes sense, Canada, French. Uh, and then there was a Portuguese site, you know, well, even got a R Russian site. Um, uh, some of you who have a bit of a sharp eye might notice a, a bit of the issues that we have uh, on the, the Russian site from a typography standpoint, but like we'll talk about this later. So uh, again, the code base for these original sites, 2014 now is like it's nine years later. We cannot, I can't find a source code anymore. So I also don't know who built it. But based on my... Uh, Source does, if you look at the source code, I'm like, eh, this is 2014. There was, a, there was a trend by a lot of like tech company websites. So like, oh, look, you know how to click inspect element. You might be a developer. Do you want a job? So I think we also follow that trend. Like, oh, yeah, show people whatever. So it's quite quite interesting. But it makes it seem as if this is like, it's not like any framework. Some, it's probably just some some team was like, oh, yeah, okay, let's just hand roll this vanilla HTML CSS website. Seems like it. Infer, infer, right? This part, I, I don't know, lah, huh? so I don't want to be saying anything. But uh, recently, I read an interview with our current uh, localization programs lead. So she's been with Shopify for quite a very long time. It was a quite a fun interview. But I, 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 I pulled this from there because it was like, we, we have an organization called Growth, uh, kind of a bit of a, a bit of a marketing department. But they, if, you, if you say that, then I, I probably offend some people. So I should not offend people. But basically, someone from Growth uh, said, had a thought because back then the Shopify blog was quite a high traffic uh, entity of ours because they were like, oh yeah, you know how to start your business online, da, 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 da. Then, but it was English only. So someone from Growth was like, eh, 
what if we translated this block into major languages that are not English? And sounds like a good idea, right? As, as we established, you know, English is a 5% native speaker. The thing is, uh, you must understand, okay, so we are e-commerce application. The .com, the website, and the application are completely separate code bases. So even though they're like, oh yeah, okay, let's just uh, experiment and let's let's translate our blog into these major languages. And it, it was a good idea because, you know, a lot of people who wouldn't have been motivated to start their own online store actually click on the sign up. And the problem is our back end not translated. So after they click sign up, they're like, oh, what is this? Hiya. Hey, bye. So then it was a lot of churn. Uh, so I was like, oh, okay, okay, we need to we need to do something about this churn. So uh, okay, this, this is twenty and this is twenty twenty. That's uh, we had like some strategy, but like back then there was a, a unified, bigger internationalization organization, which has since uh no no, no longer exists. Uh, it's been like four reox, so now no more already. But last time we had this kind of thing. So they were like, oh yeah, I got target market. Then we were like, oh no, these regions you must target, and then like, oh so many languages you must roll everything out. Um. So. The, it's a very grand concept, but if you think about it, right, it's very difficult. Not just like, not just for Shopify, right? In, I personally don't think that I can actually name a company that, like, wow, they did internationally so well. We should all learn from that. I think everyone who attempted to go beyond their own home market all ran into a dif different problems as they went in. Because it's just really, really hard, right? It's really hard. There's so much to take into consideration. But like that's a that's a strategy and business thing. Uh, I'm just a lowly code monkey. So let's talk about fun things that I encountered as a lowly code monkey. Ah, okay. So uh, when you talk about internationalization, there's a few terms that you always see get thrown around. So let's let's talk about these terms. First of all, what is a language? Ah, a language is a system of communication used by a particular country or community. It's quite straightforward. But a language can have multiple writing scripts. It's not just you know, writing scripts, everybody. So these writing scripts are visual representations of verbal speech. Uh, and then next thing is like domain. Domain, most of us understand. Uh, it's just an easy to remember address on the, on the web that I can find this website. And then lastly is locale. So the I think a lot of different frameworks have their own definition. So we'll go with the W3C one, because you know, internet. Uh, it is a set of language or country-based preferences for UI. Okay, so we establish these terms. Shopify.com, uh, we have 39 domains live in production today, and six of those domains are CJK. CJK stands for Chinese, Japanese, Korean. Uh, okay, our, our China site a bit complicated because uh, it's a bit sensitive to have a .cn, uh, but anyway, this is the general timeline of how we rolled out our CJK uh, websites. So the first site was for, for Japan, 2017 really had it, and then the rest were just like, you know, rolled out over the years. For a while, our Japan team was quite well-rounded. So they were like, oh, they were developers, content writers, marketers, sales support, all that. And they were, all look, they were actually Japanese based in Japan. That's why the our Japan site, out of all the localized sites, actually the Japan site, I would say, is one of the best localized regional sites that we have. Uh, the, the other domain, uh, the other regions were a bit, uh, let's call them, they, they were a bit less equipped. Okay, not, cannot talk shit about my company, I need my salary one. Uh, so this is the first story time. Uh, I, I call it the, the billion problem. So actually most of this example is just anecdotal experience of my uh, daily life at Shopify. Huh? So I used to work on the uh, Shopify.com team, not, uh, now I got re to a different team. Uh, but okay. Before that, let's, let's um, introduce my background. Uh, I attend, if you, it's not obvious, I ethnically Chinese. What is not obvious is I'm from Malaysia. So I can speak both English and Chinese. Uh, I can understand Cantonese, but probably I pronounce everything wrong. Uh, I can actually read Korean, but I cannot understand what I'm reading. And, and uh, so, But the one thing that all the CJK, Chinese, Japanese, Korean languages, have in common is the numeral system. Uh, of course, I bet some ancient Chinese person invented it. So for Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, right? Uh, billion, which is uh, nine zeros. We, there's no special term like billion in CJK. Uh, what the, the CJK numeral specific like term is, you've got like tens, hundreds, thousands, that's fine. 
after 10,000 onwards, right, we go up uh, by four zeros already. So that's the, that's the way the num numer numeral system works. So 10,000, we have a special word. And then million don't have. 100 million have. Billion don't have. So uh, this becomes a bit interesting when it comes to translation. So billion in Chinese is uh, 十亿, which translates to 10, 100 million. So, so just kind of like keep that in mind. You don't have to know all the, the words. Lah. Uh, just you know that it's there. Uh, so when we do translations for our website, and keep in mind that we have 39 domains and like 13 languages so to send, send to translators, we uh, do have a bit of an interpolation because there are some uh, numbers that are used about, about Shopify, the company, that are used across all the websites. So we, of course, we want to keep them uh, standardized. So we we don't we don't include we don't hard code them. We have uh, variables. So the the variables are good. You know total stores, total countries. Uh, for the most part, all of the numbers give back the full the full number. So if it's one million, it's like one zero 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 zero. But there's this one particular one particular variable, right? And you can see from the name is total GMV billions. Oh, this this problematic already because as of April twenty twenty one. Total GMV billions gave back the number 200, 200. Uh, So the end result is supposed to be what you see on top. That's, a, that's an image. But the translators don't see that. Uh, what they receive is the source, the source file with the, with the what you call, the variables that are needed to be interpolated. So uh, this was actually a bit shameful to say that it was live in production for a while before we spotted it. Uh, but like not anymore, not not there anymore because we we designed already. So this is fine. This is fine to it's fine to review because you cannot find evidence of it anymore. Oh, anyway, uh, I understand that for those of you who don't read these languages, this this image doesn't help you at all. So uh, let me explain what is actually happening and why why is this wrong? Why is all this wrong? It's all very wrong. Um, the word billion is directly translated into ten million, but the problem is because the translators didn't know that the variable was two hundred. We got back the translation. We got back a translation that read in Chinese, in Korean, and in uh, 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 in the both Chinese scripts, right? It was like, oh, hi, uh, so Shopify's GMV is $210 million, which, you know, it's actually very glaring. If you're if you're not a native speaker, you are, oh, I can't see the difference. But uh, for, for most of, for the rest of us who can read it, right, it's like a mistake that a child learning about numbers would make. It was, like, super glaring. Uh, the interesting thing is that our Japan site huh, didn't have this problem. Why is this so magical? Why, why does Japan not have this problem? So remember earlier I said our Japan team was quite quite full, 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 well-rounded and they were like very actively aware of what was going on on the Japan site. They spotted it super early and then they already adjusted. So what they did was instead of the the ten the the character for ten, ten hundred million, they replaced it with a zero and made it a grammatically correct uh, sentence. Uh, so so that's the that's the solution that they did. Replace the, the character with the number zero and it reads correctly. Brilliant. Didn't, didn't tell us, but I, I to be fair to them, because the Japanese site came up first. So I'm they, we they probably didn't know that there was a Chinese and Korean site that had this problem also. Lah. But so what, what I was saying is that the reason I even knew to fix this issue for the Chinese and Korean sites was because we had a Korean language reviewer and, and the, the person was like, uh, hi, excuse me, I know that the instruction was for us to only check the section that you told us to check, but this is on your homepage and uh, as a Korean speaker, I cannot unsee this, man. Like, that's, oh, shit. Uh, okay, Ken, sorry, we will look into it. So it, it, it's like that, that's how glaring this problem is for, for those of you who don't speak. Chinese, Japanese, or Korean. So anyway, uh, I saw like, oh, Japan site did this. This is very smart. This is uh, replicate the fix, and then all is well. Uh, so I have a colleague. Uh, his name is Lucas Huang. He works. He he works. He's out of Canada, but he also he works on a different project from me. But like, he also is involved with uh, in uh, translation related things. So he wrote up a lot more examples when trying to translate our interface into a lot of different languages. So he has written this really nice article and his examples are quite cool because there's like oh there's Polish and French and basically he has managed to find examples from la languages that just have very different structure from English. 
Uh, so I really I highly suggest giving it a read. But uh, yeah, okay, let's uh, move on. These are good points. Uh, I got 10 minutes left. <coughs> so, ah, Shopify sense. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, most people don't know, but uh, if you right click Inspect Element, you'll see that the font used for Shopify.com is a font called Shopify Sense. Hey, because like all tech companies are, oh, let's commission our own branding word. Uh, it's really very expensive, okay? Anyway, it was designed by a type foundry called Commercial Type. And because it's based on their own typeface, uh, turns out Shopify does not actually own uh, the rights to it. It's so fun. I hope I'm not revealing company secrets. Ah, who cares? But anyway, it's uh, uncreatively called Shopify Sense because naming things is hard. Um, anyway, uh, I know a guy. Uh, the, this guy built this wonderful tool. Uh, in my humble opinion, right, naming things is hard, but I think he got it right. Because this is a tool that tells you everything about what your phone can do. So if you ever ask yourself the question, what can my phone do? Get it? What can my phone do? Okay, okay. Thank, thank you for the very, like, uh, forced laugh. I appreciate this. Uh, I understand that my, my humor is uh, very weird. But anyway, I have provided a link to these two in the resources so you can try out. Is um, You don't have to upload anything. If you have a phone file on your computer, or you dump it in. And then it literally like, will tell you everything about your uh, the, the phone file. So your character set uh, and uh, CSS support, all that. So brings us to the, question, the problem uh, of uh, Vietnamese. Because the Vietnamese site was launched uh, while I was still in the dot-com team, I was a bit involved in it. Uh, so I used the abbreviation CJK, CJK, but sometimes you will see CJKV. Uh, Vietnamese is also included in, uh, in that abbreviation, stands for Vietnamese. The thing about Shopify Sense is that it does not include any of the characters in the CJK set. Because like I said, commis commissioning your own font, very expensive. And the problem with CJK languages, because how many characters, do you know how many characters they are? A lot, which makes it even doubly expensive. So no, don't 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 do it. Don't do it. Very expensive. Um, but because there's no like zero support for CJK, actually makes things easier to handle. Vietnamese, however, falls in this very complicated in between purgatory of Unicode ranges. Let me explain. If there are Vietnamese speakers uh, around, I, I, you may or may not understand. But from a Unicode perspective, right, the Vietnamese alphabets are in non contiguous range one. So there's basic Latin, but then there's also some in supplement. There's also some in extended B. The currency symbol lives somewhere else. So it's quite spread over a large number of ranges. But these, range, these Unicode ranges right, are used in a lot of fonts that don't fully support Vietnamese. So the problem that you will encounter is that you end up with a lot of missing glyphs that are substituted by a fallback font. Usually it's the system font. Um, and I understand that there are folks who cannot tell the difference if the characters of the same word have different fonts. Some people are just like, so it's the same to me, what's your problem? Like, it's the principle of the thing, okay? And also, the, for those of us who can see it, right, like, you cannot unsee it already. It's very jarring one. For example, I, I think I put this screenshot here, already really some people are going to say, looks, looks fine, looks fine to me. Or someone tell me, actually, there's a spelling mistake. That's not the point. The point is, uh, there's a mixed series of mixed fonts here, whether or not you can spot it. Um, it doesn't look that great, and and uh, this is a uh, this is a development screenshot. It never never got into production because you know we are we 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 tested and we top headed like professionals before launching, but we had this problem during uh, development. So we managed to fix it using something called a lang pseudo class, and this particular pseudo class uh, hinges on the lang attribute of your HTML set correctly. Uh, usually, you would set this on the very top. HTML, then there's a lang attribute and language. You can set it on any other element, but it's usually advised to set it at the very top level. And therefore, it falls into a category of things developers tend to forget about. Because if you do web right, while well, everyone focus on everything that is between the opening body tag and the closing body tag, that's why everything that you cannot see, right, you forget. Like, oh, meta tech never do correctly. La. The social media tech wrong. La. Social media image wrong size. La. Or then you forget the lang attribute, that kind. But the lang attribute is actually very important. Um, and it allows you to be able to target uh, based on this, the language. So instead of having to put an extra class, like if you have a mixed 
language mix scripts. You don't have to like, oh, that, that particular language you wrap it in a span and then tag it, tag it with a CSS class or whatever. It will, if, you're, if, it's, if you set the length attribute correctly, uh, it will work. And so we went with a system font, font, system fonts, font stack uh, for Vietnamese because honestly, that was the safest option. You guarantee that there won't be any of these like mixed character nonsense. So yeah, the, the site looked quite look, look much better, but that's not all. The font saga is not over yet because in a recent content and design update, our Korean site ended up having some typographic issues. And it's actually a very a bit of an edge case, uh, but you know, GG, what to do? You build a site, you run into this kind of problem. As a result of the Vietnamese font problem, right? We added a helper on Shopify.com. So if you, you are use Shopify Sense and your the lang the language supports we have a class. If not, it's a, it's a different class altogether. So for the non Shopify Sense supported one, it just fall back, it just, we just use font family uh, sans serif. So it's good because it's clean. So in the event you need to override the new font stack, it's very easy. So that was quite quite good. Majority of the time using this as a solution is actually, it's perfectly fine because system fonts are very reliable most of the time when it comes to character support. Uh, the thing about Shopify.com is that we are, it's not pure. So even if there's like Chinese character or, or Korean character, there's also English words inside. It's a mix. It's a mixed language site. So uh, what we have now is what I call the Beyonce issue. The say in Beyonce. Uh, so there's a Latin characters with those accents, right? Yeah, it's a Beyonce problem. Because there are certain fonts that don't support the Latin characters with the accents. The, like, you know, tick here, tick there, circle here, circle there, the type. Uh, our Japan team made a deliberate decision. They have a Japan font specific font stack, so it's very nice. They did not have this problem because the fonts they selected supported uh, Latin one supplement because that's where all the Latin characters with the accents live. For Chinese, we did not curate the font. It just so happened that the user agent of choice for all the major operating uh, systems use the font that has Latin one supplement. So uh, Mac OS now uses uh, Pingfang. Then Windows uses a font called Tengxian. And uh, Android use Notosense CJK. So all this support nicely, no problem. Korean? Korean on Windows, also no problem because Korean uses this font called Maogun Gothic. On Android, Korean uses Notosense CJK again. That one, full support, no problem. Mac OS and iOS made a choice to use this thing called Apple SD Gothic Neo. And just nice for some, it doesn't have this Latin one supplement character. So this is the actual, this is the actual thing you're trying to render. But if you think about it, if we try to render Beyonce, Beyonce's name will not render correctly. How sacrilegious is that, right? So in addition, uh, Korean also is a, unlike Chinese and Japanese, right? Uh, Korean has spaces between their words. Right? So even though it's quite flexible, like the words made can be split per, per word, just like per individual character or by word. For headings, right, designers hate having this like one, like one character at the bottom one. Uh, like the number of designers will say, hey, can you, can you adjust? Like we, we really cannot have this, this one word. It's just like floating in the middle. And the thing is, it only happens in tw between 20 pixels and you want me to do what? But um, the, 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 there are solutions. There are solutions that just nice for Korean works very well. Uh, so the solution for us, the font stack one, is we updated the font stack. So the way browsers pick fonts is that the order in which it appears on the font stack actually matters one. So if you'll check for the character in the in the font. If it if it appears, they'll use it. If not, you'll just move on to the next to the next next one and the next one on the list. So if you have a spe specified English font, put it up, put it up first. Uh, the end result will be much better. And then for the the character breaking thing, there is this particular CSS property called word break. And word break is nice because there's the value for keep all only applies to CJK languages. But what is the what it does is like if you set keep all, the break only happens on a space. And therefore, you would not use it for Chinese or Japanese long text. But if it's like a header, 
maybe can. For Korean works very well because Korean words got quite a lot of spaces. So it will it will always make the, the word split nicely. You'll you never have a single often uh, character. And so uh uh yeah, so uh 25, this is about 25 minutes worth of nonsense content. Uh uh these are the links. Uh, actually I will share the slides with everybody later. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming with this uh, nonsense talk. Yes, 25 minutes on the dot. Yes. Yay. Okay, thank you, Hui Jin, for an entertaining talk on the uh, subtleties of fonts and, and all the localization. Um, I'm not sure, is there any questions? Otherwise, I think I've got to take it into the next. It's not a question? No? Yeah. Question? Okay, we have to take one quick question. Oh, uh, I'm wondering if you are only relying on the system fonts or if you are shipping it in the web pages as download? Uh, sorry, come again? Uh, when you need a specific font, do you only rely on the system or do you provide them by default ah, so as download? Specifically for the Chinese, Japanese and Korean because the character set is very huge. Beyond Shopify.com, I believe that most sites that use Chinese, Japanese, or Korean as a main language will ship system fonts. And, and to be fair, the system font selection recently with like Windows 11, uh, Mac has always done a very good job. You actually have more choices, and, and it's quite high-quality system fonts. But it, it's, it's fairly rare to see anyone try to use like web fonts or custom fonts for any of the, the CJK sets because... like. If you look at the system font, the support for about simplified Chinese is about 20,000 characters. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a big undertaking. So most web fonts don't even, don't even hit that count. It's, it's at the minimum for a just standard body copy, right? It's about, you need at least 7,000 characters, com most commonly used, for it to render nicely. So actually, a lot of, a lot of the, the custom or like web font styles for CJK, people use it for headings. Headings quite safe. But the body copy will just fall back to system fonts. Yeah. Okay, we need to go and